Good evening. Thank you for joining us for evening prayer. Tonight we are going to be reading Psalm 50. And this will be the last in our current run of evening prayer. We started this way back at the beginning of lockdown as a way to uh, to keep us connected and to make sure we were staying engaged with God, centering ourselves in God in the middle of uh, changing and turbulent times. And that we're still going through those changing and turbulent times. Uh, we're giving these videos a rest for uh, at least a couple of months and then we'll um, reevaluate uh, in September time. But I want to encourage you that if you find this time helpful, and if when I said this was the last one, your heart sank a little bit, um, you don't have to stop it just because these videos aren't here. Uh, you can keep going. There's uh, more than half left in, in the book of Psalms. And if you've got a, a regular time slot carved out in, in your day um, to be still, to remind yourself that God is with you, to offer yourself, or offer God your thoughts um, and to pray through the Psalms. Keep doing that. Keep doing it. And um, you'll know, if, especially if you're joining us uh, sort of at seven each night, um, you'll know the people who are here. You'll know the people who are, who are joining you in prayer together. So actually, why not drop a wee Facebook message or wee email to some of those people and say, look, um, can we keep this going? either just agree to pray at the same time or connect via Zoom or telephone, um, if that's something that's important to you. Or equally, if you're like me, then actually you need to change those habits every so often to stop them becoming um, stale. Uh, so um, take something else up instead. Uh, make this a time to, to go out into the beauty of nature or make this a time to put on a worship CD or, um, or something. Don't lose the momentum just because our videos are stopping for now. Um, before we come to Psalm 50, we want to still ourselves, to be uh, present and to know that God is present. And then we're going to light this candle as a visual reminder of Christ's presence with us. So let's be still. And knowing that we are safe in the presence of God. Let's breathe a little more deeply. And a little more slowly. We thank you God for your presence with us. We thank you, God, that you're with us every minute of every day. You're as close to us as our latest breath. We can't escape your presence. And now in this moment, we choose to make ourselves aware. And we light this candle as a reminder of Christ's presence with us. And God, we offer you our scattered thoughts, all that's troubling us, our worries, our successes, our sorrows and our joys. We place them all in your hands, Lord, our life in your hands. We ask you, God, to restore to us your peace and your perspective. Amen.
what does God require of you? That's a big question, uh, which appears in different ways throughout the scriptures. And I think it's a it's a question um, that people of different religions asked in the ancient world. What is it the gods want of us? How can we how can we make the gods happy? Um, and it's a question that people ask today. People uh, who have a religious faith and people who uh, say that they even don't have one. Uh, but there's still a sense that there's something out there, some kind of force, some kind of fate or the universe or whatever it is, and that we owe something, that we ought to do something. Um, this psalm picks up on the idea that um, religious service, uh, ritual, sacrifice, um, saying the right prayers at the right time those are not something that God needs those are not something that God desires uh, and then if you'll already be thinking of uh, Micah and the moment in Micah is kind of like a courtroom setting um, where God says you know human what is required of you to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And likewise, you might be thinking of the prophet Amos, who um, spoke out loudly against God's people, who uh, kept all the, the rituals, marked all the festivals, uh, got, got you know, very formal worship but in the end they were oppressing the poor they were getting rich on the backs of poverty um and god actually says to them get away get away i, I, I can't stand your worship services i can't I, I don't want to listen to your prayers because you're not um you're not acting justly what i want is for justice to roll down like a river um, and so some of these themes are picked up in Psalm 50. Psalm 50 uh, has quite a sharp go at, uh, at us if our worship has become dry and formal. Or if we've lost sight of what relationship with God and faith in God and the way of Jesus really means. That actually it means care for the, uh, the widow, the foreigner, the orphan, those who are vulnerable in our society. So we're going to read this together. We're going to use it as a prayer. Um, we're going to allow God to, um, to challenge us through these words. And then we're going to pray. We're going to pray for our world. We're going to pray for our neighbours. And we're going to pray for ourselves because we'll really need it. Let's pray. The Mighty One. God. The Lord speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not be silent. A fire devours before him and around him a tempest rages. He summons the heavens above and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me this consecrated people who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness, for he is a God of justice. Listen, my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, Israel. I am God, your God. I bring no charges against you concerning your sacrifices or concerning your burnt offerings, which are ever before me. I have no need of a bull from your stall or of goats from your pens, for every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains and the insects in the fields are mine. If I were hungry, 
I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. Do I drink the flesh? Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Sacrifice thank offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High and call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honour me. But to the wicked person, God says, what right have you to recite my laws or take my covenant on your lips? You hate my instruction and cast my words behind you. When you see a thief, you join with him. You throw in your lot with adulterers. You use your mouth for evil and harness your tongue to deceit. You sit and testify against your brother and slander your own mother's son. When you did these things and I kept silent, you thought I was exactly like you. But I now arraign you and set my accusations before you. Consider this, you who forget God, or I will tear you to pieces with no one to rescue you. Those who sacrifice thank offerings honour me. And to the blameless, I will show my salvation. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you are just. And Lord, this psalm creates in us um, the fear of God, the acknowledgement, God, uh, of your might, your power, um, your anger against sin, also your justice, Lord, your righteousness. And so, God, we uh, allow ourselves to be disturbed by this word. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and, uh, and challenge us and change us through this word. God, if our worship has ever become dry and formal, God, forgive us. Lord, if we have talked about goodness and righteousness, but then acted in a way that has hurt others, God, forgive us. Lord, this psalm even talks about throwing our lot in with thieves and adulterers. Lord, if there are ways that we have... Um, conspired and joined forces with um, with others who are acting in destructive ways in the world. God forgive us. Lord, if we have thought that our uh, our worship, even this evening prayer, was some kind of ritual to satisfy you, some kind of duty um, to earn your goodness or love, God, forgive us. If we're focused on religious activities and forgotten mercy, God, forgive us. And God, if we have thought um, that you wanted um, that you wanted something from us and forgotten that what you want is relationship with us. God forgive us. God forgive us. Lord, the psalm ends talking about those who are blameless. But we know, Lord, that in our own strength and by our own right, not one of us is blameless. All of us make 
those mistakes and miss the mark, those sins, um, so often. But Lord, because of Jesus, you look on us and consider us blameless. God, thank you that no matter how many times we fall into formal worship, no matter how many times we forget that you just want to, uh, to love us and connect with us, and um, no matter how much we, uh, even when we just push to the side your desire for justice and your plans for us to do good in the world, God, you forgive us again and again and again. You forgive us through Jesus and set us back uh, on the right path. So Lord, I want to pray that you would um, just overwhelm us with your love right now. Lord, we read in the scriptures that it is the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. So God, would you give us such an encounter with your kindness that we turn from all our, our stupid religion and turn towards uh, the love of our maker. Lord, this is my prayer for myself. It's also my prayer for my brothers and sisters and those who are taking part in this video and those who aren't, Lord. All of us need to keep uh, turning towards you. And so, Lord, that's my prayer for, uh, for us, your people here and right around the world. As this um, series of evening prayer comes to an end, that you would keep us turning again and again towards your goodness, your justice, your love. I ask in Jesus' name. And we'll pray these words together one final time. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. And until we see each other again, grace and peace be with you.